immediately denying that from Jazuke. But I think eyes do have to be on that Urgot ban. The desk already brought it up. Yep, the cab got, as the desk said, already seeing some Nice picks here on the side of Vitality taken away. Of course, Jazuke synonymous with the champion rise, and Cabo Shard has been piloting the Jace as his secondary pick alongside the Urgot to try and dominate out of the top lane. And the analyst desk was, was wondering, is he one of the most dominators in the top lane, or is the Urgot propping him up? And I think Splice might be wanting to sort of force him onto that Urgot pick. Splice could be the team to answer that question for us. We will find out. Cabo getting a lot more attention this season than he has in Split's past. Of course, the stats showing that it's working out for Vitality, but maybe today is a different story. Maybe today's the day he's stuck on tank duty. We'll see, though. It really only feels like Scion is the only tank at the top lane, so it seems pretty hard to force someone. Yeah, Scion's definitely the only true tank up top side, Ooh. and for all these, these these players here, I think Cabo Shard is one of the ones that absolutely does not want to play those tanks. The Urgot is about as tanky as it gets. Other than that, it's been the Jace three times and a Rumble pick once. So with Urgot up and available, we expect him to go for that champion. Except they banned Except it away they themselves! It. Christy, I, I know. You had the mental block. You saw it. You're yeah. like, there's no way they do that. But they did, Christy. <laughs> They took it away from Cabo. Now, maybe our eyes go to something like a Kennen if they want a priority first pick top lane. But for now, the Zoe has been locked in by the side of Splice. And it's interesting to see a non-flex pick kind of first picked here in the mid lane. Yeah, I, I, I like seeing this Draven here too for Attila. I mean, this guy got a lot of confidence back after his match against Shalka last week. He smacked upset in that matchup. He carried his team for that victory. So now trying to get him on something lane dominant. We've seen Draven paired along things like the Thresh in the past to look for those 2v2 kills and to set up for great grand ganks from this jungler Mowgli. Instead, though, it is going to be the Jarvan locked in. Now, this has historically gone to the hands of Mowgli. Cabo has yet to play it this season. Though we have seen the pick on the top side of the map in two very different games from Mowgli last week. One, he was invisible. One, he was literally everywhere. So once again, that volatility does come into question as we get further into the draft. Mowgli, one of those players that always loves to lock in the champions that can go fight at level two and invade into the enemy jungle, where Xerse usually puts some more scaling on his side. We've seen the Karthus band away already, but the Sejuani would be another one of those picks that paired up alongside the Zoe. Wouldn't surprise me to see look for some, some picks in the mid to late game. Also just excellent in the hands of Xerse. Now with the Jarvan already up, there is one ult for Silas to steal and immediately it is going to be picked up. Where it's going to go, we still don't know. Of course, a lot of players on this team that are known as innovators, Xerse and Vizichachi especially, and that is the three potential places it could go, although I feel like not gonna go into the mid lane with the Zoe already picked. Yeah, definitely gonna be the top lane Silas at the moment would be my guess. That's gonna be the Echo already locked in here for Jazuke. This is another one of those classic picks that he's gone back to time and time again in the past. And you might look at it and be like, hey, a melee champion to Zoe seems pretty scary, but he can force onto the Zoe with this Echo pick. And if he ever does get hit by a bubble and thinks he's in some trouble, he can ulti out of that and just completely negate the boat. All right, and and I'm gonna be honest, I love these compositions already. I feel like all of these are gonna be so explosive. The Silas, the potential to engage, to go in for those aggressive trades. You talked about it earlier today. It's almost the way that you have to play him if you wanna come out on top. But interestingly enough, the Galio, the Poppy, now the more defensive picks being banned away, which is even more what I wanna see because if all the defensive picks are gone and all you have left is aggressive picks, Ender, then people are gonna go down. Yeah, we love kills here in the LEC, especially if we're looking at our last game. But the, the thing that catches my eye here with the Galio ban is that I think that's actually directed towards the support pool. We've seen Galio support played a ton over in the LCK, and with already seeing the mid lane locked in for Jazuke, we can expect now that Spice are trying to limit some of these champions that can force all ends here alongside the Draven to look for early game kills. And of course, a terrifying combo of the Jarvan and the Galio together. Aatrox, now the Kennen going to be banned away as well. Gonna limit the option for Cabo. Of course, we'll have the final pick here on the red side, but the Thresh, the immediate lock in for Attila. Draven Thresh, Elaine, you brought up earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering now what Splice have in mind, because you have to expect the Thresh is gonna come in from Jack Troll. He just loves that champion, and alongside the Draven, we know they can make some plays, so. For this side of Splice, I still see Allistar as an option to pair alongside the Lucian. That can be some strong 2v2 all-ins as well. Ooh. No, oh my so, goodness. Oh, I love it. This is what I want, Ender! This is so sick. And I, so Blitzcrank Theorycraft time, right? You see a Draven on the other side. Draven, he has these giant targets that appear on the ground or he wants he to, has to run. He to. has to run to to pick him up to win the trade. So what does Blitzcrank do? He just throws a skill shot at that circle, yanks him in, and if he misses, that means Draven dropped his axe, so it's a win-win situation. I'm ready to see it. 
Although now the final pick, this hover, does have me wondering a little bit what's going to happen Ooh. here. Looks like that is a Braum, or Braum, Orn, now locked in. Norskar and Braum just goes hand in hand. You got to bear with me here. And that could mean that we see Silas in the jungle. Enter. Yeah, now this is, this is really interesting because I wasn't thinking that we were going to see Silas in the jungle. He is definitely playable, and that's one of the strengths of Silas is you can flex him between mid and that jungle position. But... Now up against an Elise, this is a champion in Silas that falls very low in his first clear. Mowgli now pay taking the Elise, flexing Jarvan to topside, is looking to go ham here in the early game. Of course, Or now versus the J4. We have the Elise versus the Silas. Echo versus the Zoe on the opposite side. I Ender. We have two very explosive compositions. You got to tell me where to look, because I feel like any lane I, I point to is going to have some kind of action in it. There's going to be action all over the place. Specifically, I like this middle lane. We have Zoe versus Echo. Jazuke's classic Echo here, and with the jungler in the Elise, I want to see Vitality now playing around mid to top side of the map, because Elise alongside Echo can look to pressure the Zoe. It can also be so, so devastating alongside the Jarvan. Level two, level three ganks up to the top side are going to blow Vizichachi out of the water. It is going to be, of course, a lot of pressure to find leads in the early game with a pick like that Elise. Jungle Silas, the first time we see it on this stage. I want to see exactly what his clear looks like, how it's going to be utilized in team fights. A lot of questions are going to be answered in this game. Ender consistency for Vitality can splice, transition those early leads into something more, into a snowballed win. That is what we're going to find out in this matchup. Vitality versus Splice. And all I know, all I know for sure is that I, I'm hard willing to bet that there will be at least five kills within the first 15 minutes. Oh. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. We might have 10 kills, Dracos. Yes. These are absolutely yes. wild I don't, even, I don't even care if you're just trying to rile me up right now. That's <laughs> what I wanted to hear, Ender. <gasps> Oh man, I'm ready for this. Splice coming in just one game in the standings behind Vitality, trying to bring some consistency, but I see this team comp, I do not see consistency. I see a lot of players that want to make some plays by themselves. And the question is, can it pay off as we get into this match? All right, Fnatic Jarvan reminding us that Trinity Force and Death Dance is the way to go. Don't know if we'll see that from Kaba, but we will find out. Splice versus Vitality now setting foot onto the Rift. Of course, jungle starts, always going to be important here as we set foot into these games. And the Elise versus Silas, once again, not a matchup that I'm familiar with. Luckily, I am. Because actually, see, when I, when I left EULCS, as it was called last year, you might remember that, I went back to Briefly. NA for a little while. You did. And I was working with the playtest team mm -hmm. again. And you know what we were working on while I was there? Was it Silas? It was Silas. And you know what role I play? Is it jungle? It's jungle. So I played a so lot good. of jungle Silas. You're just you're just on fire today, Dracos. Thank you. Now the question is, will Zerse be? Because honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the Silas pick in this role. And that's because he takes a while before he can sort of scale up. Because his first clear, he falls very, very low. Where you usually see him use his W to get a lot of sustain in lane, he's not going to be able to do that in his jungle. So you have to think of this champion more like a Nidalee, where his first clear, pretty weak, he's going to fall low. He probably doesn't want to do any fighting. After his first base, though, he's going to get his upgraded jungle item. He's going to do much better at clearing the jungle. And then once he gets Runic Echoes, he blitzes through camps, and that's really when he's going to have a lot more power in this game. Well, Xerxes has options to start with the E, the Abscon Abduct. We'll get some good AoE damage down there on the passive. Gets two procs of it, though. And that's the biggest part here on the side. He's actually done this before, I can tell, because he knows exactly how many ticks the Talisman is going to do on that Raptor camp. Ooh. So he actually has a pretty good early clear already starting on the Raptor camp. The question is, will he go over towards the Krugs next to hit the early level three, then maybe look for a base, which might set him up for a pretty solid second round through the jungle clear. Ender, now that we've talked a little bit about the jungle matchup, I think we will have to watch the Elise to a certain degree, but I do want your thoughts on the bottom side of the map because we are seeing a lot of aggressive trading back and forth. It looks like a hook did connect from Norskaren, not enough to get a Tilda Force's Flash, but pressure here already very much in favor of the Vitality bot line. Yep, level one Draven can be able to push pretty easily, picking up those axes. Thresh also can actually walk up and apply pressure through the wave because he can start with his E, whereas Blitzcrank, it's a little more hard, especially against professional players, to land that level one poke for a sick engagement, Look, but he lands his air. Connect. Aftershock has already been proc. The Ignite is now ticking down. Kabi is going to go for the aggressive flash. He's moving forward. He wants to kill onto Attila. That's first blood. 
Nice signature pick, Kabi says, taking him down. Yeah, Norskaren comes in with a pick of his own. The Blitzcrank hits him with the lap oh. VM, too. You hate to see that if you are Attila. And in the draft, we're like, man, Attila coming off last week with so much confidence. Will you die at level two to a Blitzcrank hook? You better believe that's all gone now for the Vitality following. Got some boots now, can look to dodge future hooks, but definitely not the start that the Draven ever wants to have. Norskaren, fantastic hook there, and you gotta feel like Attila just wasn't respecting the accuracy from Norskaren. Now here I'm looking at Mowgli, because I know he loves to get inside the enemy jungle. And Cabochard actually walked in earlier after pushing to put down a nice ward. Xerse can be walking all the way around here, doesn't actually know where Mowgli is on the map. So this is going to mean he uses his E over the wall. That doesn't give him a tool to get out, but he contest. does not get the smite. Now has to back off here, not going to be able to get anything else. Mowgli going to grab the camp at the end, but Vizichachi just going to be an escape route for the Elise. And Jarvan is here, just say, just try it. But at the low health bar for Mowgli, he's already Whoa. in the escape, but they're going to immediately go in. Another kill for Splice here, Ender. Splice are just abusing some miscommunication issues here because Cabochard is walking away as Mowgli goes for the engagement. Splice absolutely abusing. We said Vitality, we're going to be a volatile team coming in here, and Splice have found two huge openings to jump out to an early lead. And Mowgli going for the aggressive counter jungle here. Humanoid, though. Sleep trouble will come in just in time. Not going to get stunned up. But so interesting to see that aggressive use of the repel or the defensive use of the repel to take him to safety and still Splice willing to commit on the back of that play. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought Mowgli was going to be able to get out of there alive, honestly, because you look at the 2v2 of an Elise Jarvan against that of an Orn Silas, it's probably not going to be that good. But because Splice were able to get all of their damage onto Mowgli before Cabo even entered into the fight, you were able to get that kill, and Kaba, once he uses EQ, isn't going to have too much to offer in that engagement. Did have to back off, burn so many of those cooldowns does not work out in the end. We check in on the gold, under 800 gold lead. Suddenly, he's gotten that first back off for Xerxes. He's gotten that small advantage that he may have needed to get his jungle kickstarted. Kaba just doing what he can to continue trading effectively on the top side of the map. But for now, Splice, the early game that we say comes in every game so incredibly consistently, consistently is there once again, and not necessarily in a match we'd expect it to. No, definitely not. This is one of those games where getting an early advantage is going to springboard you into a very powerful mid game, because this, this composition from Splice is excellent at singling out individual targets. You have Zoe plus Blitzcrank, which is absolutely fantastic for trying to find any picks, and then eventually Xerxe can go ahead and grab a Cabo Shard ultimate, use that to jump onto any flashless target because he has so many gap closes with the double cast of the E into the R, he can be that pseudo Jarvan and find those engagements. Cabo may be someone that you have to keep your eyes on as we as we look forward, as we look for a way to Vitality to make up some of this gold difference. But I think once again, eyes have to ship down to the bottom side of the map. Attila, some some really unforced errors here, doesn't use the flash there in that exchange. And you can see how good he is when he is on point, how dominant this player can be. But we've also seen the other side of the coin, Ender. We absolutely have. It's been it's been a real question mark here for Vitality's bottom lane in in the split. I mean, in games they win, Vitality and Jack Troll look very very good, but in the games they lose, it is not the same story. And that's why the concern has to be with Attila dying at level two with Norskaren and Kabi having complete control of this lane. Let's look at top play on the top side. Immediately moving to swap form, get the chain CC follow up and a kill now traded back just as predicted. Coming in right on that Jarvan level six two. I mean, Jarvan Elise is so, so nasty, especially when you're looking at an Orn, who a few patches ago lost the, guess what, he lost the shield. That makes trading and stepping forward in lane a little bit harder. And without the flash as well, a very easy kill, a very easy turret plate to be picked up solo here by Cabochard is going to give him an even bigger gold advantage. It's 700 gold in the top lane because he's been smashing in CS. He gets that kill, he gets the plate. He's in a great position to try and impact the rest of the game off of this advantage. And they're going to need to. Oh. oh, good use of the blood rush makes it out. We're all, we've all been there. We've all tried to outrun the Blitzcrank hook. Doesn't work out for, as well for some of us, but Attila does manage to make the safety. You can see though, after the hook goes down, exactly what Jack Troll and Attila do. They step up much more aggressively in lane because let's face it, when Blitz misses his hook, the rest of his kit just does nothing in the 2v2 unless you go for a full commitment. And even then, it's gonna be much weaker. So look for Vitality, now that they've fallen a little bit behind, to play around that cooldown, and that's when they can go aggressive, when it is down. See if there's any other points of aggression. Xerxe, of course, now with the level 6 means he can start to take some of these ultimates, get a little bit creative. Stealing an Echo ult, very nice. Stealing Jarvan as well. Really a lot of good options here. Bot lane not quite as appealing. Yeah, he can also just turn into a spider for as long as he wants, whenever, whenever he wants, which I... 
It's a little interesting, and, and, and I talked about this at the top of the day. Is that the one that we needed to talk about, was the spider one? Well, because some people don't know. It's like, well, what happens when you get transformed? Bot lane into low with the flash. Hook goes in. Nice pull oh. four. They are going to get the knock. So immediately oh, oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh. Give him a chance to move. That was dirty. You can see on the other side of the map, though, Vitality zoning Chachi off of this wave. I mean, it's Splice that are getting the kills, and they still have this large advantage, especially in the area of the map where it matters, because eventually we're going to get to late game. Chachi is just going to be buying items for Kabi to carry even harder. Oh, no. Here it comes. One more time. Unstoppable there, but the Cataclysm is going to come out. They're going to grab one more kill on to visit Chachi. Does stun into the wall. Now trying to pull back Cabo Shard. He's going to be able to make it out. Oh, I don't think it's going to be so lucky, though. Well played by visit Chachi in the end, and... Looks not 10 minutes and there's six kills. Ender, we're, we are on track, sir, to your 10 kill prediction. We're doing it, and man, that feels so bad. Because honestly, Mowgli played that really well. He didn't quite have a flash up just yet, but he gets gets blocked by the post. Now, of course, in the bottom lane, Attila and Jack Troll actually played the start of it pretty nicely, but he gets yoinked straight out of the lantern. That is just a bad news for Attila as we move forward to see this play up the top side. And Chachi, his mistake is he doesn't realize there's a ward in this bush. He was trying to sneak up close to maybe get some experience, but didn't realize Mowgli was wrapping around towards going for that tower dive. Oh. But great placement on the Q there stops Mowgli from getting out with his I, life. I, we haven't seen this champion be successful in so long, I forgot how obnoxious that orange little pillar can be. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are in a pause now. We will, we will see how this one unfolds, but already a very electric matchup, kind of as expected, seeing a lot of resources put into topside once again for Cabo, without the Urgot, without the Jace, which I think is cool that they are willing to commit, even without some of those comfort picks there. Yeah, and I mean, as soon as they sort of put Jarvan into the top side of the map, it made me think, hey, Mowgli's going to want to play for this lane, but it becomes a little bit awkward, I think, when you see the overall draft, because yes, you want to play for top side, that's where you get the freest kills, but at the same time, you have a Draven Thresh on the other side of the map. That lane is supposed to go aggressive. It's supposed to be, you know, trying to cash in that passive. And because now Mowgli's been sort of, you know, baited into playing for this top side of the map, for lack of a better word, now Attila and Jack Troll are being pressured by Xerxes. They've lost the 2v2, and they're 0 2 on a Draven pick that probably shouldn't be 0 2 if you're trying to pick it in your first rotation. That's kind of one of the difficult things about Vitality when they try to draft these lanes, where, especially with the Draven, where if you get that kill, it takes off and it feels so good. But if you're not willing to commit the resources there, it always feels a little bit awkward. Ender, of course, the, the icing on the cake in this matchup is a lot of the banter going down between, between Jack Troll and Norse Garen. Oh, yeah? Have you, are you a, have you seen Shrek? Are you familiar with the Gingerbread Man? I'm familiar with the Gingerbread yeah, Man, yeah. So the only reason this is show appropriate is because they used a gingerbread man, but uh, Jack Troll basically said, I'm going to tear your gingerbread legs off and mock you with them. So, really wholesome, because it's a gingerbread man. It's not wholesome, man. It's, it's Shrek. Think it's about it's the a, gingerbread man. What do you ever do to you? It's a film. All right, well, no. luckily we can drop it. Splice. Get that image. I can't get that image out of my head. Watch the movie. It's, it's wholesome, I swear. You're just too young. All right, <laughs> moving in. Nine minutes into the game. Four to two is the kill score. Humanoid's going to grab that one. The gold, though, surprisingly even. And a lot of that is going to be, once again, on the top side. Once again, Cabo, the man that we have to talk about. And if we take a chance to look at some of his stats, you can see why Vitality might be willing to invest resources into him. Because 30 CS leads in a 2-0 scoreline is definitely where you want to be. Yeah, and I mean, this, this guy has just been top of the league, honestly. And I think even last year, too, he was a super strong top laner didn't get the praise he deserved. He comes into 2019 and has been dominating. We had questions. Is it just the Urgot? Well, the Jarvan has looked real good too with some assistance here from Mowgli. So now the question is, with that time put into the man in the top lane for Vitality, can he turn that into an advantage across the rest of the map? He doesn't have teleport, but Jack Troll and Mowgli are looking for a play Ooh. on this bottom side of the map. Here comes Suzuki. Kabi, that's not the bush you want to be. Oh, Whoa! he showed! Still get the hook though. Chain CC. Lucian gonna try to dash, but no hope. Shut down now, gold going to the Elise. Yep, a lot of gold here for the Elise. Should uh, push her forward for that Runic Echoes to match the pace of Xerxes. Unfortunately for Attila, wasn't quite in range, couldn't land the Whirling Death to get a kill or at the very least an assist as Kabushar takes a monster trade against Shachi. He's trying to wait, trying to avoid some of these trades here, but now the Zoe's moving up as well. If Kaba wants to get aggressive here, he's going to get knocked up. There's damage coming forward. Now Sleepy oh. desperately wants to get the kill. Asleep tries to block out a little bit here. Vincent Chachi fails the flash. Can't get it. Shut down. Going over to the Orn, and immediately that lane match is going to be so evened out. Yeah, I mean, Chachi was down 1,000 gold. A 500 shutdown bounty <laughs> makes immediately him come has right a bounty. back in the game. Immediately <laughs> has a 450 gold bounty. 
this is League of Legends, folks. It is no longer... It is a game about bounty hunting. That's what you need to understand. And Jizuke is a man who wants 450 gold. Jizuke is actually running the unsealed spellbook. He popped to the ghost there to try to run into the top lane as fast as he could, because he knew Chachi didn't have the ultimate. Wasn't able to get much out of it, unfortunately for himself, though. And we check back in. We look across the map at some of the plays that have been going down. And this one, you can see why Kaba wants to go. He knows that he's the guy that has to make a play, but just does not respect the presence from the Zoe. Yeah, well, the problem is that Jizuke is hovering towards the bottom side of mid lane because he was just coming off of that kill in the bottom side. So Kaba Shard obviously not watching the minimap, not communicating well enough with his lanes, and he tries to dunk him for the kill there, but gets put to sleep. And a great flash from Chachi. He stays in range so he can get the clap from his passive and get the shutdown, but he avoids the Q from Kaba Shard to stay alive. All right. Good flash. I, I thought bad flash first time. Oh, no, he dodged it. Flash. It was sick. Works out. Could have flashed over the wall. Chose not to. Stayed in the play. Of course, Cabo should still, in theory, be in an okay spot in this lane, but sadly, without the Black Cleaver finished, the, the armor coming in now is going to be very difficult. Definitely is. Of course, for Chachi, he's just trying to sustain through this lane. Because, of course, you want to hit level 13, level 14, and start buying those Orn upgrade items for your team. That was the biggest change with Orn, really felt like. He got his Unstoppable back, lost the shield on his W, but now, instead of having his own teammate spend 1,000 gold in the shop to get those upgrades, he just gets to choose who gets them, doesn't have to spend a penny. All it needs is to hit that level 13 mark, turn to level 14, you can start donating one item per level. It's going to be very strong, especially on a lot of these champions that are going to get more and more terrifying as the game progresses. Notably the Silas, the Zoe as well, getting some of these item spikes already obnoxious to deal with. But for now, Splice pushing in their vision a little bit, trying to gain more control over the jungle. Mowgli doing his best to dance around it. But Silas with this Echo Alt feels a little untouchable. However, Zoe, not quite so untouchable. It's okay, though, playing this one slow now, trying to back off as Northscaren has made his way into the lane. Oops. Oh, Mowgli oh, gets caught. Okay. Well, Splice had walked all the way inside of Vitality's jungle and had gotten the, the, the drop down on Mowgli to get the kill. Now topside, Chachi in trouble. Flag and Dragon use the Cataclysm as well. Visit Chachi, no flash available. He's going to try to use the ultimate to try to turn this one back, but we'll get nothing there. That is the shutdown. 450 gold shutdown traded right back. So it's like the first kill never even happened. He got 50 gold out of killing the Jarvan right there. So they should be able to try and knock down a turret plate or two. Cabo Shard is fairly low, but he should know that the rest of Splice is on the bottom side of the map. He sticks around for that one solo and will trade that kill and a bit of extra gold for the Cloud Drake. Cloud Drake, of course, going to be nice to have on a lot of these champions. The Zoe, the Silas, especially other champions and the Blitzcrank. Not quite as keen, but definitely not ideal. Obviously, you always kind of want something like an Infernal when you're playing with the poke of a Zoe, but Jack Troll looking to make something happen. Immediate Cleanse is going to be used now. Oh. Back to the team. Beautiful use of the Lantern. Zuke, though, not going to be able to get anything else here. All summoners burn from Humanoid in that exchange. Hey, that was a really nice play there from Jack Troll to set up for Jizuke. And while that was all happening, Cabochard used his TP to get into the top lane to take two more plates for himself. So Spitality are really trying to snowball this top side of the map. And now the Humanoid doesn't have any summoner spells, it's very easy for them to take control over this river and look for a potential fight. Flag and drag once again, Cabo. Every time he finds the opportunity, will go in. Now with the Black Cleaver available as well, that's a pretty big difference relative damage output. But Ender, as we see this Rift Tail go down, I do want to talk a little bit about scaling. Of course, something we always have to hit in these games, but these two comps, obviously very unique. So I'm curious where you, who you think has the edge here. Well, as far as edge, I almost always have to give it to Zoe because she can create so much pressure with the poke she provides. And it's pretty easy to single out some of these targets on the Vitality side if you are humanoid and you have vision control. But that's the key part right here. Splice, in order to sort of accelerate the game, need to have vision control so they can set up for Blitzcrank for Zoe. But they do have the added flexibility because Silas can switch over to that Jarvan ult. They can use that alongside the Orn to start team fights once they have the poke down. Well, Cabo's immediately going to go in here on the play. Mowgli now in trouble has to go up. Comes right back down. Wants to get out of this play immediately. Zerse has stolen the ultimate. Is now going to fall off North Garen for the hook over the wall. And Jizuke and the rest of the team now fighting here. That's going to be the catch in for Attila. Massive spike oh. in gold trying to change the CC. They're going to move in. They're not going to get the follow up on the Echo, but North Garen is still set to follow up. The Z Dive Resident speeding him up, and that's the double for Attila. Attila putting some money in the bank right there, and that was the most vitality fight ever. The mid outer turret is still up, but they just run straight into the jungle. Because Kavi is down in the bottom lane, they had so much confidence to make that play happen. And they take complete control of the top side, but now a teleport comes in. That's going to be from Visit Chachi, and he has the Orn Horn. 
going to be big here. Going to have to see if we get the follow-up connect. Is Ursa now ready to leap forward? No to the fresh. The priority target has seen the lantern come out. Cabo is next on the menu. Holding his time on the flag and drag. Backing off does not quite have enough mana. Just wants to clear the wave. Now juking around to get the knock-up. Well played by Cabo, but not enough. Abscond, abduct, and that's going to be a death. Huh? Who's gonna get it? Kabi? Oh, there we go. Shut, Ooh, down, shut down, going to the Lucian. Yeah, lots of money right there for Kabi. And I mean, Splice, take advantage of an overstay there from Vitality. But let's see this fight one more time because Mowgli and the rest of Vitality know they can walk past this turret with the Rift Herald. They engage here over onto Tachi inside the jungle, meaning he can't get his ultimate off. That means the team fight is a no-go here for Splice. Kabe isn't in the picture, so the rest of Vitality just walk straight on in, push Splice completely out of their jungle, and with a good flash, they pick up an extra kill onto Norse Garen. Oof. Double kill, double cash in. Second one obviously very small for the Draven, but still a massive difference here. And you were talking about how important vision is for this comp as we watch the rest of the play roll out. Well, Vitality did their diligence, got all the vision on top side. The good news for Splice, though, they do, in the end, get this kill. Cabo does his best to outplay, but of course, Silas has the potential to chase here. Yeah, I mean, I just scratched my head wondering why Vitality stay pushing top lane because Attila runs back to mid. He wants to pick up some farm, and there's no way they can get the turret in time. They're expecting a 2v turret. Sure, they didn't think a TP was going to come through, but you have to be able to foresee all of those sorts of plays. Otherwise, you're going to give Splice an opportunity to get back in the game, Ooh. but not if you catch out Humanoid. Yeah, not if you catch out Humanoid. Humanoid now running. He's going to hit the Thresh, but that's the least important target. Whirling Death, the Draven on a killing spree. Just when you think you've shut him out of the game, he finds three quick kills across these fights, and now a 2k gold lead coming in for Vitality. So by the way, we did hit the 15, or we hit more than 10 kills in 15 minutes. Just thought you might want to know that, but now is where the game gets really interesting, I think, for Vitality. Because Jazuke, you don't see it right now, but he has the teleport. He's just switched over the unsealed spellbook. He dominates in a side lane against pretty much anyone. And Splice, they don't really have someone that can match him. Right now it's Chachi, but if Cabo and Jazuke both go into opposite lanes on the map, you're going to have to make Humanoid actually leave, which is really bad for this team comp, because I, I I firmly believe the only way they really make things happen very distinctly is off of good bubble plays. And if Humanoid is sent to bottom lane in a bad matchup where he has to just clear waves, that's going to be a, re a real big trouble here for Splice. Suzuka is moving down to that bottom side because Chachi has predicted to back off. Can, of course, take any of those trades. Now, Ender, if you are playing on the side of Vitality here, you talked about the difficulties for Splice, but Vitality, how are they going to close this out? What is kind of the next step for this team? Well, they're going to be looking towards this Drake in the next 10 seconds. They have complete vision dominance over this bottom side, and actually the top side of the map, too. They have a lot of control wards sprinkled around. They haven't really been focusing on just one area of the map, but just because their team comp is so threatening, they can sort of jump on you at a moment's notice. Splice have been very hesitant to sort of push up now that they've lost that outer turret. It's only now that they have Kabe pushing up on the top side that they're bringing some support around him to start layering down some vision, knowing that Baron is going to be spawning in a minute, and that is the next real objective on the map for them to connect. And this is interesting. Splice moved to the top side expecting to get a trade here, but Vitality now willing to match. Mowgli coming in quick. Not quick enough, though. Cloud Drake and this move and speed story from the Blitzcrank will take him out to safety. Kabi, though, could be in trouble with the flag drag and the ulti comes out, but pretty easy solution to dash from that one. Hook Gut is going to go wide there. Splice now backing off, and the tower will stay up. Yeah, this play from Vitality was actually really interesting because I expected them to just sacrifice the tower and take the dragon. But what they don't want to give up is control over this river because, well, we said Splice have a good pick comp. Vitality have Jarvan, they have Thresh, they have Elise. They have a lot of ways to sort of catch out your targets who are trying to layer down vision for your team. So by not sacrificing top lane turret, they force Splice away from that area of the map. Splice aren't able to put down any vision in towards the river. And now they get a free dragon without trying Trading anything on the opposite side. Well played, now matching the clouds here, so both teams are just gonna be able to chase their respective opponents. Level 11, still just shy for the Silas, not too important for the Elise, but will be an important break point. I think whenever we talk about Silas, we always talk about kind of this level 16 as being this big point. That's the one in solo queue that always feels so oppressive when he is able to steal alts back to back to back. Yeah, that's the sort of interesting thing in this game because honestly, I'm I'm not too impressed with the ultimates he can get. Of course, he'll be able to pick up the threshold for some extra CC. He has a lot of zone control with the Thresh as well as the Jarvan, but in terms of the rest, he does have some long range on the, the Draven 
an ult if he wants to look for that to, to poke or to finish off of a kill. But really, the most interesting one for me has to be this Echo Ultimate. Because one of Silas's big weaknesses in team fights is that his E tells him he has to go in if he wants to participate in a fight. So now he can grab that Echo Ult, get a big burst of damage off with you know, his E combo dashing in and using all of his spells. And then if he gets himself in a little bit of trouble, he can use that rewind to jump out of the fight. We basically built an Echo. We built a, a second yeah. Echo. Oh, flash for flash. That's a very positive trade for Splice if North Scarring doesn't get in trouble here. It is interesting because, oh, we're going to have to hold that Thok's mid lane. Want to keep the fight going. Okay. Ram is just going to go wide. Good use of the Lantern from Jack Troll. He's been on point this game. Now, while this is happening, Cabochard is pushing in the bottom lane. And he does have teleport, so he's going to put down some vision for himself and let the minions hit underneath the tower. But Splice, because they brought Chachi up, they get full control over the river around the Baron. They also have a wave here, but now a teleport comes in from Vitality. They want to fight. They're not even going to look at Kabi. They're trying to slow him down. Kabo, let's try and flash flashing over the wall, trying to interrupt, trying to get something done. But no, the AD carry is going to be down for his life. Jizuke is still getting it. Immediately snaps back with the ultimate door scared and no man's land. And he will uh, go down. Vitality with perfect access to the pit now. Now with Cabo Shard chunked out, Vitality may be hesitant to start this Baron up. But at the moment, there's no one that can really walk into the river. Chachi is about as good as it gets. And right now, Jizuke is trying to zone away the jungler from Splice. Cersei. Looking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Echo, but a four-level advantage is going to make that one difficult. The Elise wants to secure this one. And Zersei has the Echo ultimate. He can go in for a seal if he makes it. No, he wastes it now. You know it now. Jizuke is trying to fall, trying to take the jungler out of the equation. His team is focused on the Baron. He's willing to give his life to make this one happen. Visit Chachi now Both moving low. in. Where is it going to go? He's he dead. has it. Not going to happen in the end. He wants to get it, but he goes down. Attila now on a Rampage. They are going to take this one down in the end. It is a mess, but Vitality find the Baron and a 6k gold lead. It's a flag from Cabo Shard from over the wall to lock it down. That was ugly, Dracos, but it worked in the end there for Vitality. I mean, Jizuke doing so much work trying to zone Zerse away from the pit, but it almost didn't matter because Chachi with the spellbook was switching over to Smite trying to take that one away. In the end, now 22 minutes into the game is really where Vitality can start, start to use this Baron across all separate lanes with the 1-3-1. We'll see this one more time because Splice looked like they got everything in this trade, but a good flanking ward from Cabochard spots Humanoid, who doesn't have the flash. He has to pick one up and then spend that. And then they find the engagement. Norskaren has nowhere to go. Jisuke is able to snipe out Kabe on the back side of the fight. And then they go for the turn towards the Baron. And that replay brought to you by Alienware, and it just continues to play out. You can see how willing Jizuke is to throw himself into the enemy jungler to stop this play from going down. But Vizachachi, he sees his spellbook. He sees his smite. He sees his <laughs> chance, Ender. It's the dream, and he, and he comes in here, and he actually kills Mowgli. But I think he uses the smite a little bit early right there to try and stay alive. That meant no steal, that meant no fight. The rest of Vitality had to back away. And in real time, Humanoid is doing his best to stop Vizachachi from dying, but the pressure has already begun with this 1-3-1 Ender Echo on the bottom side of the map. Three members strong for Vitality with the Elise moving back and forth, and Cabo on the top side, so difficult spot for Splice to be. And now if you're Splice, who do you send bottom lane? It has to be Vizachachi. Zoe has to stay with the rest of the team. She can't clear the waves easily enough. So Vitality are going to reset. They've got now two towers. They're looking to break this third inner on the top side of the map. And then once that goes down, they can really start to lay down the pressure. The waves are a bit desynced at the moment, so I think Splice should be able to clear this away. But mid lane is very hard to get rid of if you send multiple members down locked. Now trying to lock Suke. Does, of course, have the ultimate available. Takes a lot of damage there in the exchange. And of course, Cersei has the ultimate from the Jarvan. If he wants to use it, Cataclysm not going to be the priority here. Splice definitely just trying to pick at the health bars of the Vitality lineup, but have to respect the potential for all. And Jack Troll has perfect vision of this. He's just going to throw the hook and throws it now. Oh. Well played. Chain CC now comes in immediately. He's going to go down. I'm sorry. I don't think that's going to work. Not gonna... Oh! oh! He escaped. Jizuke's on the hunt. Goes right back in and right back out. That's the beauty of the Echo. Now is trying to find the fall. If that's a low health Draven, the Ignite is ticking, but it is just not enough. Splice know that they needed to try and force a fight, it felt like, but unfortunately it was just a little bit disjointed. Oh, now Jazuke, he TPs back into the bottom lane, and Vitality, they can just pressure all these towers. Ender, this is how you know Vitality are feeling confident, when they don't fear anything, when they use those teleports to get back in, they just keep the pressure up, and now Jarvan moving in, canceling out the Sleepy as much as he can with the Unstoppable, and now Humanoid gets taken down as well, Norse Karen is going to run for his life, Hook goes wide, so the Blitzcrank will get to live, and Vizachachi's fighting an Echo, but Echo's just hitting the tower. Desperately, they want to grab this one, but 
So he could just take his time, just backing off slowly but surely. Vitality just picking his team apart. I mean, Splice just can't find a fight. That's another inhibitor falling in mid lane. Now the rest of Vitality walks down bottom lane, and the engage does not work. Xerxes is unable to find the Echo, who just chrono breaks right on out of there. Vitality, they reset. They go pick themselves up an Infernal Drake and can waltz it straight back into the Splice Fountain and look for the kill. And at this point, Ender, I felt, I felt like early in the game, I felt like Splice were off to such a good start, but all it took was one incredibly explosive play, playing around Cabo, playing around the Elise engage here, and just bringing the whole team together in the mid lane. Splice making that one mistake feels like it turned this entire game around. Yeah, I mean, you have to sort of look at the composition from Splice as well. It's not like they're very well equipped to look for a team fight. You need to be finding poke with this Zoe, chunking people out and using that poke to take control of pockets of vision. Then using that to try and start off the fight with a good engage onto one or two targets. And they weren't able to find that. And uh, a whole that, different sort of tells the story. That just sounds slow to me. That sounds like a slow, slow and steady play style coming in from Splice. And Sadly, Vitality with their composition, the second they get an advantage, they just speed the game up. You can see it. Mowgli even now is looking for an opportunity to find these picks. Jizuke is fishing with that W, looking for the opportunity to stun someone up. And right now, it's absolutely Vitality's game. 10k gold lead, two Drakes backing them up, one inhibitor stands in front of them, and Xerxes grabbing this Cataclysm. Cabo's does not care. <laughs> he doesn't. Chachi tries to get some poke. Mowgli going to force him out of the jungle, though. Vizchachi's still level 13. He can't buy items for his teammates just yet. If Splice want to hold on for anything, it is that. But now Vitality with four members in the bottom lane. Jazuke escorting the wave in mid, getting ready for the pick on the copy. Will he go oh, for it? He will. The stun. Oh, not my even God. Need it. That echo damage is disgusting. Level 17 for Jazuke. Jack over the ball. But the hook not going to connect. Jazuke just continuing to throw in the poke. Vitality in an absolutely dominant position as Cabo slide steps to sleep. Trouble bubble. Suzuki fishing for yet another stun. Mowgli walking the wave in mid lane. It looks like Vitality are determined to end. Here comes the ultimate though, going in for Vizichachi. Humanoid locked up, but it might not be enough. Immediately the Jarvan goes in as well. He's in the fountain, but he's burning down. He is going to survive. Double kill comes in for Jizuke. Vitality cleaning it up in style, but nothing left. Pull the Orn right back into the team. Attila unstoppable now. This is going to be a victory. He flashes oh. in. He gets sleepy in the fountain. It's the one for one. But at the end of the day, Ender Vitality find the win. They find the win and they find it quick here up against Splice. It was just that one team fight in the middle lane inside the jungle of Splice and Vitality, their train would not be stopped. Really, at the end of the day, we got nervous. We looked at what the analyst desk said, and we're like, this is the inconsistency they talked about. Oh my god, it's they all died falling twice. apart, but it was also the Splice early game they talked about. And then the <laughs> mid-game, it was Vitality who showed up, who found that opportunity, who turned the game around. And once Splice were on the back foot, just did not see much. We saw a lot of engages where Vitality were dic was dictating the pace, and a lot of Orn horns that I feel like were, were very responsive, trying desperately to save what was a one-sided fight. Yeah, he was trying to call for the fight. Unfortunately, Vitality outmanned them, they outgunned them. And they just took it to him right there. And with that win, and of course, Shock was lost earlier today. Vitality are in sole control of second place. Crucial as we move forward, as we look at what that can do for you, of course, puts you into the pseudo double elimination bracket. They will have to hold on to it in the games to come, but definitely have to be feeling good about it right now. You absolutely do. And we know this team lives and dies by their solo laners. And Cabochard and Jizuke had two incredible performances in this game. Cabochard had Mowgli play for him early on, be able to dive that horn, build up a big advantage, and use that initiation tool to just dive onto the back line repeatedly, tag team with Jizuke to kill Kabe and Humanoid nearly every time. And you gotta remember, we were kind of scared when we saw the Draven go down early oh, yeah. game. But then when you look back onto the top side of the map and you saw what was basically a 40 CS lead in the early game and two kills as well for the Jarvan. You kind of remember, oh yes, that's right, recently when Vitality had been winning, outside of that Shalke game, it has been so much about Cabo Shard on the top side of the lane, and just proves once again that putting those resources into him is, is well deserved. Yeah, and it proves that Vitality still know how to fight these mid-game teamfights, and still know how to then, after you build up advantage, play that split push game with Jazuke. He was so good with it in 2018 on picks like the Rise. He played the Echo the back Echo then as well. Signature yeah, pick. We can look back so to Worlds. Good. I mean, it's fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic coming in, and we saw he knew his damage pretty well when he leaped forward and, and one shot yeah. the enemy <laughs> carry. That was brutal. Of course, that's the product of, I think, a six-level lead and probably three or four K gold. Yeah, like Rabadon's Death Cap, Lich Bane, Protobell. Proto that's a Sork Shoes.
It's a lot of damage on target with no yeah, MR. feels bad being an AD carry in that situation. Of course, in a Blitzcrank in that case, really cannot save you. And it feels like when Splice got rolling, you're like, I can see it. I can see the path to victory. But the second that anything went wrong, the train kind of came off the tracks. Well, if you thought that Kabo Shardizuka or Attila had a solid performance, be sure to vote for them as key a player of the game. At LO Esports on Twitter is the place. And who... Who do you give it to? I think you got to give it to Jazuke. He had the one shots. He never died in that entire game. And he didn't get the crazy amount of jungle attention that Cabo did. Yeah. Which I think is kind of like He didn't need elevator. a babysitter to help win the game and Ooh. pop off. Well, it's a subtle flame, but we'll take it. <laughs> All right. Well, the LEC Spring Final is getting closer and closer with tickets for sale at eu.lawsports.com slash Rotterdam. Be sure to join us on the Rift the 13th and 14th of April. I, for one, am incredibly excited to go back to Rotterdam. It's going to be so cool. I wasn't there the first time, but I guess Me neither. see you going back. <laughs> Whatever. We were, we're both excited to go. Regardless, we're going to learn more about Vitality. Vitality's winning to do that. Let's check in with Quickshot and their mid laner. Thank you very much. I'm joined by Jazuke. And Jazuke, just as you came off stage, you said to me, I'm just waiting to have the time to blow up an enemy carry. Dude, the game ended with you blowing up Kobe. Uh, what did it feel like at the end of the game, knowing that you were ahead and knowing it kind of steamrolled uh, after a crazy early game? Uh, just, uh, I think everything went according to plan except the bot lane uh, 2 2. And uh, we knew from the draft already that we will win the game, and um, pretty much, yeah. I, I, I love it. Whenever I think of Echo, you're one of the Echo players. It always comes to mind, uh, especially when we look back to last year. Uh, why today do you pull the Echo out? What was it that allowed you and the squad to play the champion? Just uh, Echo is really good against Zoe. I think it's a classic matchup, and uh, it's a bit disrespectful by Splice speaking Zoe like this, but uh, it's fine. I get to play Echo and uh, smart, ma smart on it, so thank you, Splice. <laughs> smart on it. Uh, let's talk about the early game because it looked a little crazy. It kind of felt like Splice maybe had a little bit of a shot for the first few kills and the first few plays. Uh, so what went wrong in, in terms of communication is something the casters may have uh, felt allowed Splice to get some kills onto your team. Uh, I think it was just... Uh, I didn't watch the... I mean, I was watching mid, but uh, probably it's a misplay bot and, uh, well, a dive went wrong on the T2 top. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> How did they get, get there? But uh, they died there as well. So uh, I think it was overall maybe two mistakes and then uh, everything else was clean and we just played the, the game as it was uh, supposed to be and, uh, yeah, we won. Well, right, congratulations on the win. Last question before we go to an ad break. You guys are now in control of second place. Obviously, taking down Schalke last week and them losing today means you've got a one-win lead on them. What are you going to do to maintain a top-two placement? And that means a guaranteed trip to Rotterdam over the next four weeks. Well, we are going for the rank one, so I don't want rank two, I want rank one. And uh, we are looking forward to just uh, improve every, every week until the... G2 week and uh, hope that we are consistent enough to take the win against them. Well, I'm looking forward to congratulations again on the win today. We'll see you tomorrow. Right now, we're heading to an ad break, and when we come back, the spring split continues. Jeez.